We can only thank God that we are here. Um, so we really, really want to, let's, let's just give God a, 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 a like, let's, yeah, let's just give God a hand for making, amen, just for making this possible, because the Lord has opened the doors, we, we really honor Victor and his, and his wife really for opening up for us, and um, yeah, we really want to honor you as well for coming out, There's, it, it takes faith to drive on this road, but it's a good road, amen. Uh, so we believe that God's going to do something special for every person. And uh, we are so blessed just to be together again. I know there's a lot of people. Um, you know, sometimes we are so comfortable that we, um, we can go without church. The flesh can go without the church. I mean, uh, but we don't want to get to that place where we are so comfortable that we, that we don't pursue God. So it really, I want to honor you for coming. And, and what's so amazing is that God honors you for coming this morning and really pushing through. And uh, so God's going to meet not only your needs, but God's going to meet your needs abundantly and over your expectation. I believe that God's going to do something special and the anointing of the Lord is going to do something special for you because you didn't just rock up here because the, you were bored or you didn't have anything to do. You came because there was an expectation in your heart because you really want something for the Lord to shift in your life, or you really want a word from the Lord to carry you through something. And I really want to, really, really, really want to encourage you and remind you that when God gives you a word, that you do not try to fulfill the word, that you just agree with God, because the Bible says in Amos 3 verse 3, it says, where two shall agree, they will walk together. So you just agree with the word of God. Is this, should we put this one off? Everybody Okay. Okay, so if you agree with God uh, on His Word and things, then God will make the things come to pass in your life. It is not for us to carry the Word, because sometimes we try to um, have faith, and we, try this, uh, we see sometimes faith and believing God as something that I, I have to have. And, and you cannot have your own faith. You, we have God's faith. We have Jesus' faith. And what that means is, is when I spend time in the Word of God, then the Word of God produces faith in me to believe God for the things of God. I'm going to say that again. When I, when I, put my, when I trust, when I come to the Word of God and I read the Word of God, that means I put faith in the Word of God. That's your step. That's your believing. is to actually open your Bible. And, and believe that when I come, the Bible says that God is a rewarder for those who diligently seek Him. And so in other words, it says when I come and I open my Bible and I actually pray, then, then I believe that, that God will speak to me. I believe that something will shift. And so that's, that's your part. That's your faith. That's, that's taking that step of natural faith to open the Word. That, that's your step. And the rest is you in, put the Word of God inside of you and allow the Word to do something inside of you because it's not... A lot of people don't read the Bible. A lot of people don't read the Bible. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, uh, but a lot of people don't read their Bibles. The reason why is because they don't know what to do with the Bible and why do I have to read the Bible? Why, why do I actually have to invest time in the Word? And I say this again, it's not what you do with the Word. It's what the Word does with you. If you take a seed and you plant it in the ground, it's not, your, it's not my job to actually go and dig in the ground and see what the seed and the ground does with each other. It's not my work to go and, 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 and really do this, in, uh, um, how can I say, to dig it up and see, okay, but oh, this, this is not working. And so this is a lot of times what we do is we dig up the seed because we, we, we start, we, we get frustrated because we uh, want things, uh, uh, two-minute noodles. Just pop it in the, in the microwave and it's got to get done because life's got to continue. Life's got to get, but that's not how the Word works. The Word works like this. If you plant it in your heart and plant it in your heart and plant it in your heart and plant it in your heart, you don't have to worry how it's going to produce. The word and the ground, the word that is seed, the ground that is your heart, will produce automatically. Your work is to keep your heart in a place of faith. I'm going to say that again. Your, your work is to keep your heart in a place of faith um, and not in a place of unbelief. Because unbelief is like you are having a bunch of things in your soil 
that is not good for the word that you've just planted in your heart. And they see there's things that comes and it, at, at the, the Bible says the enemy comes to uproot that seed from your heart. He tries to steal that from your heart. So you have to protect your heart. And how do we protect our heart? By what we watch. Again, if you watch thrillers and thrillers and all scary movies at, at, at night, <laughs> then don't worry why you can't sleep. Why you have restlessness. It's because it's, it's what you have invested into the ground. I mean, and so if you invest the good things into the ground, you're going to get a harvest. Eventually the harvest will come. Eventually the Bible says that you will reap the reward if you do not lose heart. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. And so with the word again is you, when you speak life, you speak life and you speak life, you never stop. You don't speak life to see if it's working. You don't, <laughs> you don't plant a seed in the ground to see if it's working. You plant a seed in the ground because you know there's a law. Say with me, there's a law, there's a law. that works. There's a law that God put in place. And this is actually what I want to teach today. There's a law. There's law and grace. I'm going to quickly explain that. But I want to first say that there's a law that is actually a natural law. So if you put the seed in the ground, they together will produce. That's the law. God said, seed, time, and harvest, these things are going to work for you. You don't have to work for it. You just got to put the seed in the ground. So that's your job. That's your, your part. You put it in, and then the, those two will, will, work the, will work the magic, and the, you'll get the harvest eventually. Amen. Okay, so sometimes we confuse things. Sometimes we think, um, or let me explain this. You get the law of Moses, and you get grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And the law of Moses in the Old Covenant worked like this. The law was there actually to show you that you cannot have be good enough for God to be saved. And in the New Covenant, it is that Jesus has paid the price so that you, Jesus came and He says, but you are good enough. If you accept and you just believe, then you're going to get saved. Everybody with me? And so in the New Covenant, we don't do all the laws and we don't do all those things to actually um, obtain something from God. We don't do things to please God. Your faith, again, I'm going to say this, your faith don't move God. God doesn't move based upon your faith. So, so we've got to understand something. Stop trying to have faith for faith. Stop trying to have faith to have faith. Because what happens is we get ourselves sometimes in a really difficult situation or um, there is life happens and it is becomes, oh, I, I'm sorry, the kids, the kids, they are such a blessing and they are <laughs> welcome to leave with a sound and everything. We've got to get used to this, I mean, we've got to get used to the sound. We'll, we'll have some speakers, then I don't have to scream at you. Hallelujah. So, so God has really blessed us. We did put up some windy houses at the, at the site where the kids can have the um, sessions. And uh, so it's a big blessing. So if you want to send your kids, you're welcome. But I think they're all left. Amen. Okay, so let's, let's, get, let's get going again. So, so in the Old Covenant, it was law and grace through the New Covenant. And then you get laws that God has placed um, that God has placed in the earth and God has placed laws and principles in His Word. And so what happens is we sometimes confuse these things because the laws, I, I cannot do anything to please God. I cannot do anything but to have faith. Faith is the only thing I can have that pleases God because God requires faith. If you, if you, uh, if, if you have a pain in your body and you don't come for prayer, it means that you don't have faith. You don't have faith that God's going to heal you. The fact that you actually come to the front, it means that you have faith. That means you stepped out. And so, so it, is, it is important for us to understand that God has put some laws and principles that is not the law of Moses, that is not uh, based upon grace, but it's laws that is actually, if you put the seed in the ground, it's going to work. If the Bible says in, in, um, in uh, what is it, uh, Proverbs chapter 18, 21, it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So that's a law that God put in place. So if you speak death, you get death. So if you speak death, you get death. If you speak life, you get life. It's a law. It's not because you have a good personality or because you're a good Christian or because you're a nice Christian. If you speak death, you get death. 
And so we've got to get this. It is a different law. It's the law of gravity. Okay, so the law of gravity is actually God has set it in place actually to bless you. Otherwise, we would be floating around and we would be, I don't know where we would be. So there's a law of gravity to keep you grounded. And then you get the law of, of actually um, uh, thrust and that, that the, the, the airplanes, they've developed that to actually use thrust to, to pull up and get the airplane in the air. So that's a, another law that is there. So that is natural laws that if you abide by them, you, it can bless you. But the same law that God has put in place also can work against you. Not because you're a good Christian, not because you're a bad Christian, because God loves you, but He wants you to understand something. If you work against the laws, they work against you, and it's nothing personal. <laughs> it's, nothing, but it's not because you've done something wrong. It's just because we don't abide by that principles and that, those laws. And so what it means is, if I jump off the roof, it doesn't matter if I have, if I say I've got faith and I jump off the roof, I want to tell you, you might go directly to the ground. And it's not God having something against you. It is you violating a law that God has already set in motion. And so the Bible says that actually that God, God upholds all things by the power of His Word. And so in other words, it's God's Word is above His name, says the Bible. So His Word actually keeps the earth in place. If His Word wasn't true, then everything will self-destruct. Everybody with me? And so in other words, we've got to find out what is these laws that God gives us to abide by that works for you, not based upon your goodness, not based upon your badness, but because of the law that is already set in motion. The same law uh, that's gravity is not there uh, because you're a Christian or not Christian. It's going to work with you. <laughs> uh, if you're going to jump, a Christian jumping next to a non-believer from the roof, both of you are going to get to the floor. Hallelujah. Okay, so amen. Okay, so I just want to give you a few laws. If you are too overheated in this place, please come and stand in front of the fans. You're going to be okay. Um, and then we're going to be fine. Okay, number one, I want to give you Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Ach, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that comes to God must believe that He is... Say with me, that He is... That means that you actually believe that God is real. <clears throat> God, is not, God is not a fairy tale. God is not something we read about. God is actually real. And when I approach God and I believe that He's present here with me, not based upon me, but based because He says that if I believe that He's here, then I can actually participate of His presence right here in front of me. His presence is not, He paid a price to get to you, you cannot do something to him, for Him to get away from you. Because you didn't do anything for Him to get to you. Does that make sense? He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. means that God will not turn His back upon you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Not based upon you. Based upon He made a covenant with you that he'll, I'm going to stick with you. Not based upon you. So there's a law that's working. But I have to believe that this is true to my life. So in the morning when I wake up, I come to God and I sit down and I say, Morning, Jesus. What does it do? Let me read this again. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he that comes to God must believe that He is. Morning, Jesus. Hello, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. You're amazing, Jesus. You're here, Jesus. I don't, it doesn't matter if you feel it. It says you must believe that He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek Him. And a lot of people don't read their Bibles. It means actually that there's no faith in the sense of actually just stepping out to, to engage. Just to engage. Just to believe. Just to have that little bit of faith. And say, listen, He's present. He's actually real. He's more real than you and me. Because He created you and me. Does that make sense? And so any time, doesn't matter what you're facing, any time you can elevate the Word of God above any situation you're facing at any time. So if you are tired and weary, and you say, oh, I'm so tired and weary, you've just activated the law of death. It's nothing personal. It's just there's laws set that cannot be changed because God cannot change His Word. 
so we have to abide by it. So when I'm tired, I can feel something, and I'm get, I can, I can uh, what, what would work better, I'm not saying never say nothing, it was, but, but it will help you a lot to say sometimes more nothings than something. But I really want to encourage you, if you're tired, say, but Lord, thank you for your word that says, when I am weak, you are strong. And I thank you that strength is abiding in me, strength is coming up in me. Lord, I thank you. I don't know, what, uh, you, uh, the Lord is constantly working on me with this, because sometimes I get myself saying, I don't know. But the Bible says, actually, that you've got an abiding anointing that teaches you all things, and you know all things. Not all things in your brain necessarily, but all things in your spirit. So if you want to tap into the supernatural power of God, you're going to have to speak with God and work with God. Does that make sense? And because He loves you. He loves you. He doesn't want you to speak yourself into tiredness. He doesn't want you to speak yourself into depression. He doesn't want you to agree with, uh, with death. He doesn't want that for your life. He's got good things in store. The plans that I have for you is to prosper you and not... To harm you. Hallelujah. The next one, it's a, okay, but I want to I stay with that one just for a little bit more. So in the mornings when you get to God or when you take your Bible and you read the Word of God, you believe that the Lord, thank you that you are speaking to me. Thank you, Father, that I can hear your voice. Thank you, Father, that your presence is with me. Thank you, Daddy, that you love me. Thank you, Daddy, that your love for me is not based upon me because you died on the cross and that proved your love and value for me. You see, God loves you, loves you, He loves you crazy. And, and He loves you as you are crazy. Amen? He loves your craziness as well. <laughs> he didn't die for you when you are perfect. He didn't die for you because you have already cleaned yourself. That's why we come to Jesus, because He cleans us all. Amen? That's why church is so awesome. It's, it's full of hypocrites. Why? Because we're also. <laughs> We constantly have to come to Christ to get this changed. Amen? And get this changed. That's why we come to Jesus. Because He's the only one that can change us. Hallelujah. So we have to believe that actually I seek Him. When, I, when, when you, when you want to have, when you come to God, wait, uh, let me uh, read this again. It says, um, it says, For he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder for them that diligently seek Him. So in other words, is if many people go and spend time with Jesus in the mornings, but they don't feel anything. Let me ask your hands. Anybody done that? You spend time with God, but you don't feel anything, you don't hear anything, you don't sense anything. That's okay. That's perfect. You're absolutely normal. Okay, nothing wrong with you. The only thing is, is, we are either, we, 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 as we spend time with God, we become more sensitive w towards God. And so I pick up more in the spirit. What is God busy with me and how is God working in me and through me? But when life speaks louder than the word of God, again, when life speaks louder, then you become insensitive towards the presence of the Lord. You, you become insensitive. That's why... God can never change. He cannot change His love towards you, no matter what you do. Okay, this is, that sounds crazy, but that's the gospel. Because your, your doing cannot change who He is. He chose to be love. You didn't, we didn't make Him love. We didn't make Him faithful. We didn't create Him. He created us. And therefore, He doesn't change based upon us. But your actions and my actions changes us towards Him. If you live in sin, your heart will become hardened towards God and the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit wants life for you, because He wants freedom for you, because it says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So God wants blessings over your life. God wants to take you where... There's a lot of provision for your life, where there's financial provision, where there's health provision, where there's all provision. Every, every area of your life, He wants you to prosper. But that's, I need to be in the place of sensitivity. So I can fast, I can pray, I can um, fast and pray is one of the laws that, God, that Jesus set in motion. Because Jesus said these words uh, when, they, when the disciples tried to cast out um, 
and the, 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 the epilepsy, the demon out of the, the child that had epilepsy, Jesus afterwards like, came and said, Lord, why, cannot, why, didn't, why couldn't we actually cast this out? And he says, it's because of your unbelief. And he says, these kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Now, this is not a kind of demon. This is the unbelief in your heart. Because we live by, a lot of times, by sight and not by faith. And God says, live by faith and not by sight. And because the disciples saw that it was, uh, the child looked like it was dead, fear entered their hearts. And so the same thing in our daily lives. When things look dead to you, fear comes. And you try to go into your own flesh and you try to fight your battles. Instead of saying, Lord, what, do you, what does your word say over this? Let me fight with the word because the word is more powerful. Because the word is spirit. And spirit will change physical things. And you can change people's hearts. People coming against you, you pray for their hearts. You pray for their hearts to be changed. You pray for, you pray for the influences of the, the enemy and the demons and everything that influences those people to come against you. It's not God coming against you. God's not in the business of taking. He's in the business of adding to your life. God loves you. God loves you. He gave His one and only Son so that you can have life and life in abundance. Amen? He's, he's really crazy about you. And when we get to know this love and when we get to experience this love, when we get to believe that He actually loves me the way He says He loves me, then I experience God completely different. And I walk out in, the, in, in life, and this has helped me a lot, because I was also, I believe, where everybody was. I came and grew up in multiple churches, and I could not understand why God, why do you allow bad things to happen? Why do you allow bad things to happen? I don't understand it to good people. It's not God allowing bad things to happen. God said, a law in motion. He says the law of dominion. That humankind have dominion and what you do with earth is up to you. So you can pray and you can allow God through prayer into earth to work in earth. You can submit to the Spirit of God by working with God to make a difference in the earth. Does that make sense? It, it gives us an understanding of how God functions. Because God is not my problem. And God is not the author of your problems. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. And, and He's the one who gives you good blessings and He's the one who gives you good things. I want to I try to continue. Okay, number two. I've got only nine points. So we're going to be here a little bit late, but it's going to be okay. No, I'm just joking. I'm going to rush this. I'm also boiling. It's okay. No, not really. I cancel that in Jesus' name. You see, you've got to cancel what you say sometimes. Amen. And so sometimes we get into wrong friendships, we get into wrong circles, and we start to let, let words go. We let words go. Oh, this country is this. Oh, this country is this. Oh, this happened, this happened, that happened. I want to tell you, if I have to meditate on the news, I'm going to be as... You just can't think about it. Because you've been given a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Love, not a spirit of fear. What happens in this, uh, in this country, if you believe that you are from another country, which is called the country of heaven, then you abide by the heavenly principles and by the heavenly laws. And these heavenly laws will work for you if you believe them. But if you believe that you are, you are abiding and you are a citizen of this earth, and the earth laws will only work for you the way that the gov uh, hallelujah, the way that the other people make decisions in this country, you're going you're gonna to be not in a nice place. I mean, so stop thinking what is everybody doing out there. And I said the other day, again, do not go there if you cannot change there. I mean, do not start to speak about all the things. I know we've got load um, shedding, uh, but I, I've got another name as well, but we're not going to use it in church. But you get me. So, so you're, gonna, you're not going to go there. Your mind's not going to go there. Wherever your mind wants to go that leads you, that produces a, a um, how can I say, um, a discouragement in you, you've got to stop that. You've got to stop that because that really has an effect. You've got to start to speak the Word of God over your life and say, I live by this. God, you will bless me so I can put solos on my house so I'm independent from this stuff. Okay, I know a lot of you have got solos, but anyway... You just get my point. 
You've got to work around it. You've got to just trust God for something different. You've got to just trust God to give you another outcome. I want to go to point number two, the law of love and honor. Law of love and honor. I'm going to try to rush this. The law of love and honor. You've got to love the Lord. The Bible says you've got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and everything that is within you. You out of yourself cannot do that. Okay, let's, let's, let's get to that point. You out of yourself, you cannot do that. There's another one that is working with it in the Word of God. The Bible says that we love because He first loved us. So in order to love God, I've got to understand His love for me. I can only respond the right way that He wants me to respond because I received His love for me. I cannot respond to God actually in love and true love if I do not actually first receive His love for me. And so with all of us, he says he pours out his, uh, <clears throat> his love by his Spirit into our hearts, um, we, uh, by the Spirit cries out, Abba, Father. So in other words, is we have to be um, baptized by the Holy Spirit. We have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And by that, we've got to ask the Lord to open up and show us what is the way of grace and what is the way of righteousness. What does it mean? It means that grace is God's love towards you, unconditional. It is favor on your life, unconditional. Are you all okay? Everybody still with me? Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're not going to pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit because otherwise, I don't know what we're going to do. But we'll, we'll, prog we'll, we'll progress as this is a trial run. I mean, okay. So don't think where I'm going to be next week. You're going to be at church next week. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, hallelujah. Uh, the law of love, in other words, is I receive first God's love for me. I've got to ask the Lord, Lord, show me how much you love me. Give me revelation of your love for my life. I want to understand how much you love me. There's so many people, it's easier for you to pray that God will bless me than you to pray that God will bless you. Why? Why? Because we think that our deeds is, has something to do with God's love for us. We think our deeds have something to do with God's blessing upon your life. Uh, on your life. No, your deeds has nothing to do with God's blessing on your life. If you try to perform, you can stop the blessing of God because you try to earn the blessing of God. But the blessing of God is not earned. That if you want to earn God's blessing, then it's no more grace. Uh, am I? Am I? Am I? Am I? Am I okay? Is it going okay? Okay. So, in other words, is to be calm and to enjoy a relationship with Jesus and He will produce the faith in you to believe for everything God has blessed you and has assigned to your life. So I've explained this previously. Everybody, it's like you've got a, a warehouse in the Spirit that God has assigned to your life. And how do I get to that warehouse? It's not by seeking someone else's warehouse. It's by seeking the Lord and ask, Lord, what do you have for my life? What is the assignment on my life? What is the purpose on my life? And Lord, I want to know you first. And secondly, Lord, why am I here? What am I doing here? I cannot just be here to make money or to do this or to be this or this. I, why, what is the calling upon my life? And then you seek the Lord and you believe that God will step by step show you and take you in the right direction of where you're supposed to go. I, hope they, I, hope, I believe that makes sense. Hallelujah. Okay, so the law of love and honor. So in other words, is if I receive God's love, then with that, I experience love, and then I can love Him back. I can, I, can, I can have a different type of relationship. It's not me trying to be a good Christian. I've tried when somebody said to me, oh, when I read the word um, at a stage in my life, I, it says there that um, you've got to love people, and I tried to love people. It, it only took me a week, then I started to swear at people again. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'll raise my hand. It only took me one week. And I saw that love in myself, there is none. There is not an actual real love. There is a pretension and there is a, there's other stuff, but there's not real love. The only way that I can have true love is when I receive God's love. Because He is love. That's the only way that I can have a true love. And that love is not a love that just wants something. I, don't, I want something. It is like that. Uh, um, I'm going to just say it in short. 
I, I've, I've shared this testimony, uh, not the testimony, but the story previously, the fish love. The fish love is like, it's like this guy, he went to fishing, he was with his friend, and he went fishing, and he took out the fish out of the water, and um, he, 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 he killed it, he stripped it, he boiled it, he cooked it, he ate it, and he says, I love fish. And his friend says, okay, you love fish, okay, let me understand this. You take it out of the water, you kill it, you cook it, you eat it. You love fish. Yes, I love fish. He says, no, you don't love fish because you actually kill the fish. You are selfish. <laughs> because it's a self-satisfaction thing. It's not an actual that you love the fish. If you truly love the fish, you're going to do whatever is good for the fish. <laughs> Just think of your whole life. I love that. I love this. I love you. I love you, but let me go and have my golf day, please. I love you, but let me go and just do what I want to do. I love you. You see, it's, it goes deep. It goes deep. I love you, but let me, I really need you. I really, really need you. I need you to satisfy me. I love you, but I really need you. No, if I receive God's love, God satisfies something, a need inside of me. And when He fulfills that need, that is why He says, You come to the living water and you will not thirst again because the reason is that thirst actually will suck other people dry. I'm not saying you, you guys are awesome. It's not you. I'm just saying what's happening out there. So if that need keeps pulling, it pulls, it tries to seek something. It's like a, 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 a no, not, let's not go there. It's like something that tries to suck, 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 suck. But it can never, ever be satisfied. It can never. Even if, if you've got that need to hear the whole time that somebody loves you, loves you, loves you. There's something, it, 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 it shares, there's a need. And I know that your husband's got to tell you that he loves you. But it, there's a place where you can be fulfilled by God. That is, they, it satisfies you. I am loved. I am loved by the King of Kings. I'm loved by the Lord of Lords. I'm loved by some, someone that can fulfill me, actually, and not by words that cannot fulfill me. Hallelujah. I'm, it's, next one, number three. Let's quickly go to the third principle is the principle of sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping, this is sowing in your words. That is why I always say, speak life, speak life of your partner. Do not speak what you see, speak what you want to see, because this is important. If you tell your child the whole time that he's naughty, you're going to have a naughty child. If you tell your husband the whole time that he's stupid, you're going to have a stupid husband. It really happens out there. But let's all laugh. Sometimes we've got to refrain from just speak. But you know, it does take pride. And pride is not a nice thing. It's pride when we don't want to say what we want to see. It's pride to say what you see. Because it says that I declare this is real. If the <laughs> I don't know if I can repeat that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That was smart. <laughs> It takes, it's really, it's pride to not want to speak life because he says, this is what you've got to do to have life. You speak it. You call it forth. You call it in. You call the things that you want to see, you call them in. You call them in. You speak it in. You, you, you call it forth. That, it's, it's really, 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 really important. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I, I skipped one. The law of honor uh, the law of honor is really to honor people, to honor each other, to honor people. If you are in a company and even if the boss treats you not well, honor them. Why? Because it's not the boss that brings your promotion. Your promotion is not from the east, south, or the west. It comes from the Lord. So if you honor despite the persecution, God will restore you. God will pick you up. God will lift you up. God will make a way for you. You just got to keep your heart pure and keep going. Hallelujah. And we can honor each other. You can honor your wife. You can honor your husband. The next one. Oh, I really don't want to go to five o'clock. 
The next one is the, uh, oh, the law of uh, sowing and reaping. You can, uh, if you reap respect, you're going you're gonna to harvest. No, if you sow respect, you're going to harvest respect. When I sow love, listen to this. When I sow love, <laughs> I don't go and expect the love from the human that I sowed it to. <laughs> when I tell my wife, I love you, I love you, I love you, I don't expect her to, to produce the harvest. I sow it because I have it. God is the one who makes the harvest grow, the one who brings the harvest back to me. Amen. When I sow financially, for example, you sow into what is in the Spirit. It is not the pastor that's supposed to bring the harvest. The <laughs> It is, it is God that brings the harvest. It is God that makes the way. If you sow... Amen. You all get me. Everybody is with me. Hallelujah. If you sow upliftment, you're going to reap upliftment. The next law is to put God first. Put God first. This is really... An, I, I, um, okay. Do not think of your finance. Please, do not think of your finance. But let's just talk about the principle, of the law of putting God first. This is significant to every single Christian to, to, to the point where you have an understanding of what does it mean to put God first in my life. The effect that it has on you is I cannot explain to you in natural words how it will affect your life. If you put God first in the morning or in the evening or whatsoever, whenever you take time to have time with God and just to spend time with Him, when you put Him first and you honor His presence, what will be produced out of that is absolutely significant. Absolutely. I cannot emphasize this enough. How, how important it is to put God first in whatever, in, in time and everything. I know sometimes we have busy schedules and all of that, but if you really, really want to, you can make appointments and make time for the Lord. It will change your life in many aspects of your life. There's a lot of times we try to treat the fruits, the fruits of depression, the fruits of anxiety, the fruits of fear, the fruits of, of bitterness, the fruits of unforgiveness. We try to treat those. We try to get them off the tree. But if you put God first, God will come and He'll help to uproot the roots that produces those fruits that you try to treat. Does that make sense? And a lot of things in your life will change. A lot of attitudes and bitterness and, and sharpness. I know, I know we've got some, sometimes, uh, may, I think it's maybe on the TV. You get people that's really sharp. As soon as you touch them, they, it's like a knife that wants to come lash back. And the reason why we lash back is because we, there's something that's getting touched on the inside. If I've, if, I'm, if I've got a burn here, and you come and you touch it, yes, I can slap you, but you're not the source of the burn. You didn't create the burn. I might give you a reason why it's burn, why it's extra sore. I might have this reason. So if I bl keep blaming you for the reason for why, why this thing is, is, uh, is like sore, then there's, it's, it doesn't change anything. The, the problem is with me. I mean, okay, I'm going to finish now. I'm going to finish now. Sorry, this thing just keeps popping off. Okay, the next one that I want to just give you, the law of fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. The law of fasting and prayer is super important because fasting is for you to get unbelief out of you. To get unbelief out of you. It is not about the quantity of faith you have because the Bible says that every person has received the measure of faith it means that we all receive the same measure of faith. It is not you got lots and you got little because God is not a respecter of person. And I know some of the translation says you got a measure of faith and that's not the right way. It is the measure of faith. It means that if I take a bucket and I pour 500 mils of water in it and I pour it out on you and I pour 500, I pour it out, it's the measure. Same measure. It is what you use and Jesus rebuked his disciples always because of their little faith. It's because they only used that bit. It's not because he, they had little, and this guy had much, and that one had more. You see, because otherwise we disqualify ourselves because of 
I don't feel that I have faith. You don't have to feel that you have faith. You just speak the word of God and faith will be. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You just speak the word of God. You, you can speak yourself into a lot of faith. Amen. So you all got the measure of faith. It's what you use. And sometimes we are so captivated by what our, what our society is and what we are in and what we go through that we are dominated by unbelief and fasting Fasting and prayer. Fasting your phone, fasting food, fasting something. You don't, it's not a religious thing. It, whatever works for you. So I, I'll fast food for a day, but I'll drink a lot of coffee. Amen. I don't know if you go fasting without coffee. You can maybe if you've got a lot of faith in that. I'm just joking. It's not a religious thing. It what works for you to get the unbelief out of you. Because you've got to fight unbelief. Because if I've got this little small bit of faith, and that little bit of faith, sorry, that's about the size of my spit that it is. <laughs> if I've got that little bit of faith that moves a mountain, it is not how much more faith do I need. It, it is what is resisting this from actually producing. Does that make sense? What is resisting this? And I need to understand the resistance is so many times is my unbelief. Because my unbelief counters faith. It counterbalances your faith. And you trust in God for things and you try to believe for things. But at the same point, you, you're coming into this group and then you start to speak death, for example. Or a person speaks death. And he just says what's the natural. He speaks the natural and he comes this side and, he, and I'm going to have faith and God's going to do great things. And then he comes this side and he speaks death again. And you counter, you just, you just scrape your seeds. And then we wonder why is this not working. No, it's just because it's how it works. It's a law that's working. If you put the seed in the ground and you take it out of the ground, it's not going to produce anything. So if you are a farmer and you're going to wait, you're going to wait the whole season, but I waited the whole season. Nothing produced. Well, what happened to the seed? Ah, oh, what counted the seed? And so it's, again, it's not a performance thing. It is, the Bible tells you, what counters seeds is your mouth. When you speak death over your seeds, and the next thing is unbelief, not believing. Because he says, the people departed from the living God because of their heart of unbelief. And I'm going to finish with this. So I want you to just stay with me. Just two more, five more, ten more, twenty more. No, I'm just joking. The people departed from the living God because of their unbelief. And so what does this mean? It means that God's got more grace for you than you have grace for yourself. When Peter said, Jesus, I want to come and walk on the water. And Jesus says, come. He walks on the water. And Peter looked at the storm and he started to sink. The Bible does not say that Peter dropped in the water. Listen to this. and I'm going to leave you with this. The Bible does not say that Peter dropped in the water. He started to sink means that it gradually started to sunk. That is how your faith sometimes works. If you allow things to penetrate and come in, unbelief, 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 it's a, it's a, a, you are hardening your heart towards the things of God and you start to gradually sink. And so if you want to come up again, then you have to put your emphasis and say, this word will work in my life. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what I feel in my body. I, I walked on the floor selling cars in Johannesburg. I had a back pain like crazy. And I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I speak to this pain in my back. And I say, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. You will not have, have my body in Jesus' name. And, and, um, and I came against it. I said, you're a liar. Because the Bible says, let God be true and every human being a liar. So in other words, it says, if God says that by His stripes I am healed, then that settles it. And so, so many times when we pray for people, for example, this is just an example. This is not, I, I'm not picking on anybody because I'm not, I don't. When we pray for people and we say, uh, we pray and the Bible says, lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover, then they have to recover unless there's unbelief involved in the process. Or, the, the, or sometimes the enemy tries to steal your, uh, the, 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 the healing in that, in that sense. But what I want to come to is we pray for the sick and then somebody will say, no, I, I believe God's going to heal me. Listen to this. I believe God's going to heal me. It sounds spiritual, but you just declared unbelief. I believe God's going to heal me. The Bible says... That by His stripes you are healed. 
No, I believe God's going to heal me. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys are awesome. I know that you're walking in faith. I'm not sure how much unbelief you are walking in, but, uh, but God is good. And so, so therefore, God gives us principles. He gives us laws by which we can work with Him. We can work with fasting and prayer. We can, we can do that. And somebody else, he, a testimony from another guy, he says what he does, if he, he goes on one day fasting, if the pain don't go away yet and he rebukes the pain, he goes on a second day. And then his body starts to scream and he says, if you, if, if you don't submit to the Word of God body, then we're going to go for a long one. Because the flesh loves its comfort. The, the flesh likes its comfort. It likes its food. That's for me, personally. And so therefore, you've got to fast some stuff that, that you know is, is uh, distracting you and, and producing maybe unbelief in your life. And I, okay, now I'm going to finish with that. Amen. Amen. The last thing that I'm just going to say as, as, a, as... Okay, there's one more. Is the law of meditating on the Word of God day and night. If you, take, if you believe that when you take the Word and you meditate on it day and night... It will work for you. It will work for you. Because that's a law that's been set in motion. It says, every, uh, if you, uh, Psalms chapter 1, Meditate on the word of God day and night, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves shall not wither, and it shall not dry. In other words, says, there's no dry season. There's no dry season. There's no drought season. And it, it's a principle. I can abide by it. But unbelief causes me not to to actually meditate on it. My unbelief causes you to meditate on fear. Unbelief causes you to meditate on the situation you're facing. Unbelief causes you to meditate and think the whole time on the problem. Does that, that anybody with me? But I speak faith over you. I speak the gift of faith. Let's close our eyes and we're going to pray. Father, I thank you that I speak your gift of faith upon every person in this place. Father, now I uproot with the authority that you've given unto me, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name alone. Because the Bible says that the, the, um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The name of the Lord. And by the name of the Lord, thank you, Jesus, that I come and I uproot every seed of unbelief in people's hearts. Father, not that they have to try, I want, uh, that they have to, try to produce anything. But that I come in Jesus' name, I'll uproot seeds of unbelief, seeds of fear, seeds of anxiousness, seeds of death that people have spoken over their lives. I cancel it in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that the church is moving forward into victory. A victory that Jesus Christ has paid for them to have. And Father, I thank you that we are taking ground in Jesus' name. And devil, I command you. And, and I curse your hands and your sickness and your diseases in any person's body. I curse it in Jesus' name and I break it off in Jesus' name. I rebuke pain. I, pre- I rebuke uh, spasmas. Uh, I rebuke muscles that, is, uh, that it wants to um, um, be in rebellion. I command that spirit of rebellion get out in Jesus' name. And spirit of pride, I, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that we humble, uh, humble ourselves before your powerful hand. And Father, thank you that you will lift us up. And we'll th- uh, thank you for your anointing that is here that produces healing into people. In Jesus' mighty name right now. In Jesus' name. Uh, that produces breakthrough in people's lives. That produces things in people's lives. And produces. Thank you that that faith moves mountains. That little faith that people have here is enough because they came. They came this morning. They've got more than enough faith to move mountains. We just cancel every form of unbelief in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.